And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this on. Let's see. Let me turn this guy on too. Okay. Before I do a little intro. Test, test, test. And we're set. Let me put this guy over here so we're not all locked up and sync it with the camera okay now that that's done okay for the people that are watching this live welcome to another live stream i'm recording this as well with the lapel mic because the odds are i'm going to be cutting this up maybe if certain questions come up and there's certain things I want to address if we get to it or if the conversation takes us in that direction I'd like to have this recorded so I can put out little segments uh, regarding education or whatnot okay so just above where we're live streaming there's a camera set up here and that camera is recording with the lapel mic so this is sort of behind the scenes sort of trying to show you what I'm doing and this cam mic here is the mic for the live stream that we're live streaming okay so I'm going to do a little quick intro before people start rolling in uh, for the recorded section. Uh, okay, so let me do a little. And I do this to sync up the sound with the camera, the lapel mic, because it's recording on an external sound recorder. Okay. Aside from that, let's do our little intro. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what we're going to do today is uh, talk about education and just to let you know what I what we're doing right now, we're live streaming this on Twitch as well. And this is something that we're going to start doing a lot more of in regards to live streaming discussions on education, as well as most likely recording some of them because it's sort of a Q&A and I have some things lined up that I would like to talk about. And if the conversation takes us in that direction, what I'll probably end up doing is cutting up the video, the one that's recording with the lapel mic right now, going with my external sound system and presenting that information in sound bites on the channel. And most likely I'll put them all back to back as well. So you get an extended discussion in more of a chill ASMR format. And as well, most likely, um, the live stream video will be loaded on BitChute and YouTube and whatever platform we end up sharing this information, okay? Aside from that, if you're watching this on the recorded version, we're gonna be cutting things up. The next little while, what you're going to hear is some of the discussion that took place on the live stream, okay? And if you're watching this live, welcome to another live stream, everyone, okay? Um, as before, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give everyone a little bit of time to roll in. And what you just heard was sort of my intro to a recording that I'm doing with the lapel mic and the camera, uh, because I'd like to cut this up. I'd like to start a whole series on education, continue our series playlist that we've created uh, on YouTube and the videos that we've released regarding education. But I'm gonna roll that, roll that out a little bit faster now because of certain events that have taken place, some of it we discussed in the last couple of streams, right? Spider, hey Chicho, how are you doing? How are you doing, Spider? Welcome to another live stream. Hannah, welcome back. How's it going? Uh, doing well, man. I've been consuming lots of information for the last uh, two days, as you know. So uh, it feels good to be caught up and sort out through the information and be able to uh, get myself organized to uh, reply to what has taken place. Okay, greetings, Dr. P. Blessings to you as well, brother. Chief Toff Bifong, have a good day, y'all. You too, you too, Chief. Uh, Connor, hey, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Hey, T, the QC Warrior, how are you doing? Haven't seen you for a while, brother. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Martin. Welcome back, welcome back, and Taco, how's life? Hope you guys are doing well, man. We're doing a live stream on education, fun. Hannah, I feel that the university system, at least here locally in the States, is too focused on political indoctrination and not enough 
on providing students the tools and skills to earn money and to live their lives it's not just about earning money but to that's part of it for sure to be able to maintain your life and manage your life right um, but that's part of the design of the system in my and it's, that's not just my opinion it's the opinion of many people right I have a couple of articles that I've written in the past that I'd like to read to you guys as well uh, warrior I just finished my last university exam of the year it feels oh my god awesome congrats congrats I know that feeling feels amazing es especially if you put the time in to study for the material where you know you did well on the exams if you if you didn't put the time in and uh, you went in there and you didn't do well it's sort of disheartening but if you've put the time in and you go in there prepared if you do well you feel fantastic if you don't do well at least you go you gave it a shot that's important and you learn something right taco life is okay I wish it could be better I think uh, everyone right now wishes life could be better right there are very few people that are content with the things the way things are in their own lives as well as externally as well right thoughts Hannah for sure I'll give I'll I'll read one of the articles that I put out where I referenced a lot of people lectures and uh, quotes and stuff like this and they'll give you an idea of my opinion regarding our current education system sovereignty UCC nice. dr. P taco Europe I have free health care America I have memes Canada I have both uh, Canada is not no longer free uh, 25 years ago 30 years ago 40 years ago healthcare system here was better now you have to supplement your uh, social health care system with secondary health care right we're slowly in Canada becoming a two-tier country at least a two-tier sort of a class system um, where those who have benefits like one of the hooks and um, balls and chains of people staying in jobs that they don't like is the benefits because if you have health benefits through your work then you get eye care if th there's split ups like some people get the if you get the whole package right you get eye care optometry you get you get dentist you get massage chiropractor physio and stuff like this right and then it's a tier system where it goes down to people who don't get any benefits just get the bare bones where they're not covered for eye dental um, massage chiro physiotherapy or any secondary system or uh, medicines pharma right uh, Canada is not all roses I got a calm degree and I feel very unprepared in the workforce now I hope you're not in huge debt Anna uh, I did great I think I'm just glad it's over <laughs> nice that's regarding the test would you say it's worth the effort to go to school to teach uh, I've always wanted to teach but my sister-in-law who was an English teacher says it wasn't worth the effort and the stress uh, I can honestly tell you I can just tell you from my experience I've I looked into the centralized education system when I first you know it, it became obvious to me like 20 years ago or something like that that this is a direction I wanted to go I wanted to teach uh, I wanted to interact with and there's a lot uh, to gain from teaching I mean there's one thing that people don't appreciate right there's a lot of stress in our current education system centralized education system but a lot of that stress uh, a huge chunk of it is not because of students is because of the system right and that is the way it's designed as far as I'm concerned and many other people as well right so I'm regurgitating to a certain degree but um, one of the greatest benefits of teaching is you're interacting with the youth you're interacting with generations that come after you and you're seeing how they're interacting with their surroundings so you get exposed to technology that you wouldn't otherwise be exposed to if you didn't have that interaction with the youth you get exposed to media entertainment movies animation books comic books uh, new types of games and you get introduced to novelty when you are interacting with youth that is one of the greatest benefits of getting into education you are kept on your toes and you're 
walking around in life if you're paying attention in awe of what is taking place in our society and how fast it's rolling out. If you do not have that connection with the youth, you miss out on a lot of that novelty. And that novelty introduces disruptive innovation within our society. So if you're wise, if you're paying attention to what is happening with the youth, you can incorporate uh, that information into your personal life outside of your work, your interaction with the youth. One of the main places that you can introduce that information is in your personal finances when it comes to investing because you're on the forefront of seeing what new technology has to offer and what is being adapted, adopted, what is being used by the youth, right? It's amazing. And that is one of the greatest benefits I've had as an instructor or working as uh, with teaching mathematics, okay? I just wanted to put that out there since this came up. Uh, so there's amazing, amazing things about teaching. The drawback, the centralized education system, and that is the reason why I decided not to go within the centralized education system route, okay? I didn't go to our current centralized indoctrination centers to be able to, you know, to spend a lot of money to get a piece of paper, you know, after a year of training, piece of paper that tells me that I can work in their institutions, right? What I do is private. What I do is online. And that's one of the things I quickly came to realize when I started working with the youth that they were learning from the net, right? They weren't learning in their schools anymore. And they considered their schools to be prisons, really. And they were shut off from the information coming in, majority of people anyway. So they were getting learning things from being online. And that's one of the reasons that uh, one of the catalysts that really kicked me into gear into learning how to live stream, edit video, shoot video and stuff like this. I took what I really wanted to do, which was to interact with the youth, to teach or to interact, to teach, right? I took that outside of the centralized system and I looked at what was taking place with the kids and I decided to go to them instead of expecting them to come to me. I'm just going to catch up with the, with the chat a little bit. I know I sort of went off there. I hope that answered uh, your question, Spider. <laughs> I sort of went off on that, right? I have a decent job, but I can barely afford to move out of my parents' house. I am saving, and I know the minute I move out, all my savings will be gone. Here's the thing, Hannah. It's not enough to save that's because i know you're in seattle you're in the united states i'm in canada in the western world it's not enough to save what our current economic system has done political system has done was punish savers so to for for them to be able to kick start the economy that they initially collapsed right what they're forcing to, people to do is to make their money generate money to get the idea in their head that our current economic system is all about money begetting money so it's not enough to save you have to invest so what you need to do is figure out where you will be investing your money we put out videos regarding this right personal finance and stuff the first place should be your health your family your community and whatnot if you have anything excess left from your must must contribute to right uh, places what you need to do is find out where you can take some of your money roll it over and generate more money right it might be just you going you know online and buying used products right if you have a hobby buying used products or products that people are giving away throwing away selling whatever it might be taking that stuff refurbishing it reselling it you could decide to buy things in bulk like auto wreckers the way they make money is they buy cars that have been destroyed through accidents or whatnot 
and they take things apart and sell the parts, right? So they make more money by selling the individual parts than selling the whole thing as a whole, okay? So I, I can give you an example of that affecting me in my life, right? Uh, I used to play, play drums. I had drum set for 20 years, and when I was doing a move like 20 years ago, uh, I needed to sell my drum set, right? I put it up initially as one complete thing to sell for like $1,500. No one took it. Like, no one bought it. So what I ended up doing was selling it in pieces. And I ended up selling it total, like, for four grand, right? All the pieces. So if you were, if you understood instruments, drum sets specifically, you could find people who are selling those products as complete packages. And if you think you can make money by breaking them apart, selling the pieces off, that's one way you can invest. I'm just going off a little bit on that just so you have an idea of what it is that I'm talking about when it comes to investing your money and uh, generating more money outside of your day daily work habit. Hello, Rabinator. How are you doing? Not in a massive debt under thirty thousand monthly. The payments are doable. So my other friend have over CS. A lot of people have a lot of debt. Wow, that didn't sound good. Correction: monthly payments are low under thirty. <laughs> okay. Uh, if teachers are getting paid very poorly, then in the future there will be less teachers. There will be less. Uh, there will be less. I don't want to say qualified because qualified is could mean a gazillion different things. Uh, there will be less. Uh, the quality of teaching in centralized education systems will go down. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Taco, to answer your question, I hope that did it. If teachers are getting paid very poorly then in the future there will be less teachers there will be uh, what I said before right? <laughs> in centralized education systems however there will be amazing teachers appearing in alternate systems alternative systems may they be private schools may they be schools that have a different take on education and there's a lot of them around I'm personally working with one right now to help distant that they're distant education students right they offer alternative type of education maybe related to the environment or whatnot and i'm sort of working with them to to get them through the curriculum for the mathematics right so it's going to be a different system okay that's something really i'm trying to emphasize in this stream index how are you doing hello from austria i'm saying it again canadian education absolutely sucks Rabinator, I 100% agree with you, and it's gone on the toilet in the last 20 years by leaps and bounds, by leaps and bounds. It has been totally gutted for any Canadian parents, uh, students that are watching this right now or will be watching this. If you expect our current centralized education system to prepare your children, okay, or to prepare you for the life you're about to encounter outside of the bubble outside the indoctrination centers you've been forced to uh, spend a huge chunk of your youth in uh, you have to appreciate that you have to supplement that uh, system you have to you have to bring in or work with your kids or with your siblings to educate them uh, with the, to prepare them with the, with the knowledge they need to be able to function within this current society and what is to come okay our current centralized education system in Canada is not doing that not by a long shot okay hello index index rabinator please elaborate uh, let me read you guys Ooh, there's a lot of chat I do I lost okay I'm gonna scroll down I'm sorry if I missed anything if uh, if there's anything important that you wanted me to address please let me know I'm just going down to the bottom of chat again uh, I was uh, bullied from grade 6 until grade 11 it was not good yeah Rabinator I've gone through that as well right but that is part of the system I've learned from that personally through bullying right um, and there that's stories I'll share later on um, but D 
the having to deal with bullies in the Western world is part of our system. So for sure, it is extremely hard having to deal with bullies. It took for me, it took huge adjustment to do because I came to Canada. Um, here, I'll give you a little background. I came to Canada in the late 1970s from Iran. And I came here when I was like wee big, 10 years old, 11 years old, right? Didn't speak a word of English. And during that time, there was a lot of, um, um, a lot of turmoil in that part of the world, right? There was a hostage taking and revolution in Iran and huge, that's one, when one of the greatest conflicts that we're still witnessing right now between the United States and Iran took place. So, and the mainstream media was what it is right now. But to a certain degree, uh, less blatant, right? So there was a lot of propaganda in mainstream media. And of course, Canadian media was portraying uh, Iran in a certain light, right? And me being from Iran, coming here, didn't speak in a word of English, I had to uh, deal with a lot of ignorance, right? Even as a youth, because the kids would, you know, when their parents are watching the news on TV, they would hear what's happening and they would hear comments from their parents and whatnot. So there was a sort of a, a trickle down effect that from that even to elementary school level, right? Where there was a certain amount of flack I ended up getting. So I learned quickly. It took me a while, actually. I don't want to say quickly, but uh, quickly relative to how old I am now. At the time, it didn't seem to be too quick, but I learned how to adjust to that system. And that has helped me through life uh, as an adult, right? So for sure, b bullying and ignorance and racism and all this stuff is uh, a problem in our current indoctrination centers. However, that is part of our current political economic system as well. So if you realize that you can't take that to heart okay it's nothing personal it's not about against you if you're encountering bullying or racism it says more about the people doing it than it says anything about you if it even says anything about you right so please keep this, this in mind if you're in school if you're getting heat and hate and a uh, certain amount of either verbal or physical violence the physical stuff we can talk about if you like I, I, I can't give recommendations on that I know how I dealt with it um, but if you're getting a lot of pressure from your peers or from the system you're in please appreciate please understand that that says nothing about you that's all about them the system where you are and if you're encountering that don't become a reactionary. Think about what's going on. Talk to whoever you need to talk to to get a different perspective from the box you might be in. That is extremely important. And go slow, okay? Go very slow and educate yourself and really appreciate that it is true. You're being put under a lot of pressure but your peers are also un under a lot of pressure. And if you're strong enough not to crack, you all of a sudden realize that the reason you're getting all this flack is because they have cracked. They can't handle the pressure. And that will alleviate a lot of pain that you might be going through, okay? Education is terrible for anyone that's not average. If you're really smart, you need acceleration and if you're not you still need to move and it's not about uh, being smart or not if you're able to uh, if the system is able to break you to be able to program you indoctrinate you then you might be okay it's like being in prison right obey 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 but if you have a different way of processing information that doesn't mean you're not smart it just means the system is so ridiculously closed off to anything outside of what it what it has the capacity to relate to that it's making you feel that way okay
common core curriculum is designed to bring everyone to the same level of mediocrity. I would say I would make a common core is designed to uh, dumb down the society, right? Indoctrinate the society so they will obey. When most people need a personalized curriculum and move at their own pace, exactly. Some programming on visualization, meditation resulting in physical manifestation. Yeah. You need to, Dr. P just mentioning this, some programming on visualization, meditation resulting in physical manifestation. So if you're under a lot of pressure, if you're feeling that you're going to crack, first thing you need to do is talk to someone outside the box. Next thing you need to do together really has the same importance is slow down, breathe, and really appreciate that the world, you are much larger than the situation you've been put under. Okay, meditate, visualize, relax, relax. Okay, hey Chicho, mods are we all allowed to uh, swear? Uh, the Rabinator, the auto uh, mod might grab some of the language. Okay, so if you can, please keep the uh, language more of a G rated language games at home mom how are you doing martin i suffered bullying back in school but i used it to make me stronger 100 percent. me too uh, but I, that doesn't mean we didn't go through hard times right swearing is okay but uh by me as long as it's not at someone else awesome thanks for clarifying that index and if the if the auto mod grabs it i'll try to approve it or i hope one of the mods will uh, try to grab it as well then i'm gonna say the education system is making me <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Mad now. <laughs> On Chris, I'm a QC warrior. For example, I'm really dyslexic. I had a lot of difficulty learning to read. Me too. I really, I, as you know, if you've been watching my work, right? I read things backwards. I read words that aren't there. I, names to me are crazy, right? Uh, but I wasn't able to get help from my elementary school because I was. Uh, memorized the words and was able to pass everything but not excel I was very lucky that my mom was a teacher and pulled me out for the year so she could uh, teach me phonics awesome I don't think I'd be successful at all if I wasn't so incredibly lucky I can only mourn for the thousands of other learning disabled kids who never got the help they needed okay because and it continues uh, Tabernacle, tabernacle. I know that. <laughs> That's the only French Quebecois. I don't know if it's even French. It's Quebecois word that I know. Tabernacle. Miners are learning to code because of bad working conditions and no work. Uh, yeah, awesome. And that's part of what we need to deal with with our current education system, right? There is right now in our societies there is a lot of people that are going through relearning re-educating re-understanding because through technology automation uh, inverted totalitarian economic systems um, austerity whatever it might be our current political economic system is going through a lot of changes a lot of turmoil so there's a lot of people that are requiring retraining, relearning, re-education uh, in different systems to be able to pay their bills, right? It's huge, it's huge. It's one of the greatest uh, revolutions taking place right now, okay? Hey Chicho, I hope you're intrepid. How are you doing? You're having a good day. So see ya. Admek, have a safe flight, man. Have a safe flight. And have a great weekend i was wondering how uh, you say say calm and chill often and what ways or practice you use to achieve this oh let me read that again hey chicho hope you're having a good day i was wondering how you stay calm and chill often and what ways of practices you use to achieve that um i i go for gigantic huge walks sometimes uh, with music sometimes without lately i've been listen to a lot of music um, I make sure I spend the time when I need to spend the time 
to learn about what's happening and whatever I'm interested in. So for example, two days ago, Julian Assange was extracted from the Ecuadorian embassy, right? I woke up, when was it? Thursday, April 11th. I woke up at like five o'clock in the morning, heard the news. And since that time, because we did two live streams uh, since then, right? I was consuming news after news some of the information that i was some of the videos i was watching i was running them at one and a half or twice the speed right and just straight focus and that's one of the things that keeps me calm and chill when i feel under pressure and that's one of the things that happens um, in our societies right if you feel under pressure uh, a lot of the time the reason that you're feeling under pressure is because it's a time-based pressure right you're under the gun okay there's a clock running and you need to get things done for a certain time and that's what our current education system has has indoctrinated people with right that is one of one of its functions to put people on the clock right and that introduces anxiety so if you feel like you're on the gun you need to learn something and you don't have the time first thing you got to do is slow down next thing you got to do is stop procrastinating because once you're procrastinating what it means is you're letting pressure build up right so people have asked me over the years uh chicho how do you uh, how do you how, how is it possible you're happy all the time and i'm not happy all the time only insane people are happy all the time right take the joker for example right he's got a smile 24 7. he's insane right we have multiple different emotions right and we're supposed to as human beings feel all of those emotions right so our current economic political system tells you if you're feeling bad if you're feeling sad then take a pill right and you don't have to feel that way but those emotions are required for us to be human right and to understand what's happening and to be able to process all that information so please appreciate that the people who've commented oh i'm always have almost good mood and stuff like this i try to be but i'm not always but one of the ways i've increased the frequency the period where i stay in that mindset is by not procrastinating right because when i'm procrastinating it means i'm not doing some of the things that i needed to get done right and that's building up behind me as becoming more and more pressure on me right so one of the tricks that i've learned to do to be able to be productive did okay in school not bad pretty good right to be able to produce all this work that i'm doing is doing things in my life that i don't like doing first right so if anything comes up that i really need to do that i think i have to do right then what I end up doing is I put everything that I wanted to do, almost everything on hold that was gonna slow me down. And I focus on this content here and I consume information, do whatever it is that I need to do. May it be physical labor, mental labor, reading, cleaning up, getting in contact with people, whatever it might be, right? I do these things first. And what I noticed over years, and it takes a long time to reach the state, right? Because most of us pro have procrastinated. We learn how to procrastinate early on in our lives because of our centralized education system, right? So as we grow up, we realize that there's a lot of things we needed to do that we haven't done. So start knocking that stuff down. And what you're going to find out is this, okay? If you continue this for an extended period of time, you're going to find out most of your life is not spent worrying about the things that you need to take care of that you really don't want to tackle most of your life is going to be filled with things that you've always wanted to do because as soon as you start doing things that you, that come up right away that are bother that are annoying that is are being forced on you just get them done right away then this queue over here is empty and this queue over here this wall over here is full of goodness that you want to do right that you could spend years doing okay so just imagine yourself standing there you got two pathways 
things you really dislike doing, things you really love doing. Keep this side empty. And as soon as something comes up, get it done. So it's always empty. So the things that annoy you, <laughs> annoy you in life and whatnot, whenever you look over here, there's nothing there. There's nothing to annoy you. And you look over here, and wow, you got so many choices, so much to choose from to make you happy, to enjoy, to create, to work with, to learn, right? So that's one of the tricks I've used uh, in my life, okay? I'm not sure if I even answered the original question that came up, but that's the direction it took me. Has anyone done any investing in any uh, investing apps or no, breathing? Breathing techniques are ridiculously important, Dr. P mentions, right? Breathing is uh, one of the ways that personally for myself that I used to calm down, right? And it means deep breathing. Take it, take it down to your tummy, okay? And slow it down and hold your breath at times okay the cutest <laughs> whenever the one's the, the 10 by 10 math puzzle rabbinator we were supposed to in the last we were, we were going to do in the last couple of streams but we did the julian assange stream discussion which i'm very happy we did that the 10 by 10 puzzle maybe we'll do it in the next two to four weeks maybe in the next month if we haven't done a rabbinator, if we haven't done it in a month period, send me a reminder and we'll do it. Okay. Uh, it's just what happened with Assange. Uh, I need to create some content for that. Okay. When I was in school, I had trouble learning and reading. I was teased and made fun of because I read slow and I had uh, trouble understanding words eight letters or longer. And I had an abusive teacher who made fun of me and she would uh, give sweets or money to kids to make fun. oh man I'm sorry to hear that taco there are a lot of not nice people no no you know what there are the majority of people in the world are amazing nice people but there are some people you come across that have been brutalized in life that's the way I look at them right they have been brutalized they have been broken multiple times in life and the only way they can interact with people is to reciprocate whatever has been done to them that's part of our system right now hopefully it doesn't stay that way for much longer but it is right now i personally think the education system is horribly broken and the teachers union is a big big issue it is a big issue that's not fun taco okay i'm going to scroll down guys i missed a lot of comments uh apologies again if there's anything you wanted me to address let me know and i'll address it okay uh, intrepid I really appreciate the advice I'm going to start implementing that in my life and I will let you know how it goes thanks again brother my pleasure intrepid and one of the things I highly recommend and I mentioned this before remove clocks from your visible line of sight in your living space okay because that means you're always thinking about time so if you're doing something that you need to spend you know be focused on remove all clocks from your vision proximity don't check it just do okay that really um, improved my life i have used the cure for uh, medication purposes to sit back and chill it is a great stress yeah for sure and i've done it when i was uh, uh, cigars and with music and walking for me is one of them I don't do it often but in certain instances it's the way to go as well as tea of course sit back and enjoy some amazing tea and a snack if you like here's a snack I brought for today halva and dark chocolate right I don't feel like having any right now I just bring it over here just in case I want to have some right Deep breathing ASMR is also a great combo to relax 100% ASMR are you a doctor uh, if that's addressed to me no I'm not a doctor <laughs> uh, we shall know there is no uh, they no, let me read doctor uh, and the 
only separation that exists is the separation that is focused upon for all is connected for all is connected dr p in vedic culture the mantras have always taught us that tur uh, turiya is the fourth state that follows between the three stages walking dreaming and deep sleep da, 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 da. i true uh, the turiya i refer to is pure consciousness cool jackson dmt dmt jackson mr dmt how are you doing have you ever read uh, dm turner's books i went to psychiatrist for anxiety and they told me i was hopeless and needed to be intensely oh man of course i did not listen because they just push out pills psychiatrists don't even use science they just hand up uh, yeah there's way too much pharmaceuticals out there i like halva it's a dry sweet uh that tastes like caramel but it has a sticky sandy texture yeah it's amazing <laughs> not good um okay gang let me do we're 40 minutes in right and i wanted to point you to a couple articles that i had written in the past that i want to read one of them to you some of the stuff that i wrote i have read dr uh, strawsman the spirit molecule nice nice i haven't read all of it i've read excerpts of it how does dmt work Ooh. Um, we all have uh, the chemical DMT in our brains, um, in our bodies, and we get doses of it. And there are different things, but we leave that discussion for when we start talking about entheogens. Uh, never tried DMT in my life. Mastery over the breath is the biggest psychedelic. Awesome awesome dmt jackson phenomenal ditto dr p says right you can have complete control over your body and mind and spirit okay the link that i just supplied uh is through a pineal gland of the third eye of the third eye cool thanks jackson the article that i just linked to you guys i'm gonna not reach out for a bit i'm just gonna go to this article and do a little intro comment and i'm going to read some excerpts from it okay this is an article that i put out in 2013 i had written about education a fair bit before this as well but this is one of the ones that i uh, compiled a bunch of information on okay sort of sharing my bit of information regarding what my perspective is regarding education okay and this is one of the uh, sort of visions the foundations of what it is that i am doing online here okay and what my general overview of our per current present economic system is okay and i've linked up a lot of different articles in this article as well so there's a lot of hyperlinks going all over the place there's some videos that are embedded okay some of the videos are dead some of the links may not work they've been taken off or whatnot okay so there's certain ideas that I was specifically referencing sometimes or general thoughts that I was referencing. But let me read, uh, read you this uh, little bit of this article, okay? And I put this out and I'll provide, if you're watching this on another platform, I'll provide this link in the description of this video because we are live streaming this as well. Um, so it will be up, okay? So the title of this article is this, Paradigm shift in education krishnamurti on the educator Ra on ignorance Ra, i'm referring to robert anton wilson gatto john taylor gatto on the system and hamming on learning and all of these people are uh had a serious critique of our current education system and there's other people that have also referenced in this such as chomsky and other people okay so let me read that title to you again Paradigm shift in education. Krishnamurti on the educator, Ra on ignorance, Gato on the system, and Hamming on learning. Okay. First paragraph. If I'm quoting anything, I'll put it in quote. So first paragraph. And this first paragraph basically sums up my core perspective on our, on our current education system. The root cause of society's ills is how we deal with education. Deep down, we all know this. 
but for decades we have barely lifted a finger to address it the main reason for this inaction is because most of us are are ourselves products of this defective system we have been programmed for obedience turned into self-absorbed apathetic beings that submit to authority and fear dissent okay that's the first paragraph and right below that i link to an art uh, to a video by noam chomsky and it's titled education is a system of indoctrin indoctrination of the youth highly recommend watching that video okay the next paragraph we are bombarded with propaganda that wants us to believe in the economy that if everyone had a job and the economy was growing at whatever rate our centralized government had set then all would be well there are two problems with this mindset first our crony cannibalistic economic system is uh, will never reach this zenith second it's a lie a better economy is not the solution to our woes what is is educating our children to become integrated beings free of envy and materialism unfortunately our present education system is not set up to achieve this task not yet anyway but it's coming and it will change everything okay and here below that paragraph i link to a video by alan watts and it's titled what is money uh what if money was no object okay worth watching the next paragraph this is a there is a war going on for the hearts and minds of our children for the control of the future oh, let me read that again there is a war going on for the hearts and minds of our children for the control of the future our present education system is collapsing and numerous parties are vying over who will be the dominant player during this revolution hence the faction faction in control of the system from billionaires like rupert murdoch and bill gates to politicians governments traditional and charter schools massive online courses homeschoolers teachers unions and parents everyone is joining the fray and for all of those names and systems teachers units all of those i've provided links to articles that were active live when i initially wrote that piece and below that paragraph i link to a ken robertson uh, robinson speech that many people have seen uh, and it's titled how to escape education's death valley and he gave this on ted talk right next paragraph no matter no matter what the final outcome the simple fact is that a centralized system should never again be allowed to dominate education in our society we are diverse and social creatures and require intimate and personal stimulation to grow learn question and create to be educated we need engagement to be fulfilled we need to be triggered we need educators that engage students to challenge inspire and motivate okay and below that i link to an art to a video that's dead now okay and it's basically a reaction of a student in school and you can find tons of these it's just this one uh, i recall well because the student stood up in class and really put the teacher and the system in its place okay it was phenomenal right and it's titled or used to be titled a uh, high school student goes off on teacher about his education okay and there's other links there's interview with jeff bliss below that i can't even remember what that is okay the following two paragraphs as for how we can achieve this task the answer has been available for decades we just haven't acted on them below you will find some examples of what needs to be done what follows are excerpts from Krishna Murthy's uh, Judy Judu Krishna Murthy's Education and the Significance of Life. L it links to a PDF, and I put out a video where we read excerpts of Krishna Murthy's Education and the Significance of Life. And that book I highly recommend reading for any parent, for any student, for any educator. And in my opinion, it should be mandatory reading for everyone in school. Right? I don't care what type of school you go to. Okay. 
So let me read that paragraph again. And I reference a few different people here, and I have links for all of these, and there's excerpts below all of, all of this as well. Okay, so reading that paragraph again. What follows are excerpts from Krishna, Judu Krishna Murti's Education and the Significance of Life, as well as lectures from three playlists. Robert Anton Wilson's first segment as he explains as he explains everything or old Bob exposes his ignorance ignorance links to torrent on the pirate bay okay John Taylor Gatto's first hour interview regarding the ultimate history lesson and Richard Hamming's opening lecture on learning to learn okay and John Taylor Gatto is amazing I highly recommend following uh, reading some of the stuff he unfortunately passed away in 2018 okay last year uh, one of the greatest educators ever um, Richard Hamming is extremely well known in the scientific community um, on uh, sort of colleagues with uh, Richard Feynman and stuff like this and there's a huge lecture series there where he's teaching a lot of things I've gone through that half that playlist okay I really like this teaching style and then uh, the works com uh, completed. E uh, so the last little sentence I have here is the works complement each other quite well and are well worth exploring, especially for educators and parents. OK, and I'm not going to bother reading the excerpts, uh, but I highly recommend watching the John Taylor Get Gatto video series. The ultimate history lesson uh, is five hour video, five, six hour video lecture series okay i just wanted to read that to you guys okay um that's my take on our current education system okay so i'm just going to go back to chat uh, and then there's here let me tell you one other article i've i put out as well and i'll link this as well okay and this is short more um, i'm just going to read the first just three paragraph that i wrote that uh, below that are excerpts from three different education sort of mindsets and systems okay and uh, here let me link that up with uh, with the chat send that off and i'll provide the link in the description of this video and the title of this post is excerpts from three articles on education dorothy sayers richard f Feynman, and john taylor gatto okay and my intro to these excerpts is to say that our education system is broken and in need of a gargantuan overhaul is an understatement, but it will happen since it is inevitable side effect of the liberation of data that comes with an open internet. What form these new systems of education will take are yet to be determined. Only time will tell if they will be optimized replicas of the present models or if they will be based on a new way of teaching and thought either way the overhaul is long overdue and i for one am excited to see the transformation below you will find excerpts from three excellent articles on education that address some of the problems with our current systems they are well worth the read okay <sighs> educating yourself fundamentally means uh, to broaden your horizons and this is Jackson the the anti Jackson horizons from being in limit limit lit, limitedness you want to enlarge yourself unfortunately the form of education that is imparted to people today despite broadening their information capabilities makes them very narrow in terms of their perception and inclusion of life around them 100% agreed Jackson 100% agreed so there's never outside of oneself even in advanced chemistry uh, dr. P the answer is never outside of oneself always within all ex uh, exterior is a reflection of the interior dr. P, uh, Jackson replies absolutely people should look inward 100% agree with that as well praise be <laughs> Chicho's preaching says <laughs> have fun okay uh, and there is I've missed a lot of chat uh, previously uh, do you make your own uh, Chicho do you make your own website try uh, w3 school it has free CSS tutorials oh I haven't gone on there taco 
Uh, and right now I'm just creating the content. Once I get into writing uh, the modules to supplement, complement, to be uh, to be used with the videos themselves and exercises and solutions, then I'm going to find uh, appropriate websites to share that information, to uh, compile that information. Right now, I just really enjoy creating this content, these videos, interacting, and uh, just doing a, the back end work and staying focused uh, on uh, making sure I'm aware of what's going on politically, economically as well, because I have an interest in that and uh, I enjoy creating content related, related to that, as well as ASMR and comic books and whatnot, right? I'm not on a, I don't feel like I'm on a time crunch. Um, that being said, obviously, if I had uh, unlimited funds or a certain amount of funds coming in, I could definitely roll things out by introducing new people to do some of the back end stuff. Chicho, you missed a question on robo advisors uh, like uh, Acorns. Someone was looking for your thoughts on using them. Oh, let me look into this. How do you meditate? Uh, do you do some yoga practices? Uh, for me, uh, for me, my meditation is I just relax, right? There are certain ways that I uh, meditate that I won't get into right now. Uh, I do go to festivals, so I dance. Sometimes I dance uh, at music festivals for hours upon hours. And that I learned through walking. And walking is one of the forms of meditation I do. And that's something I learned uh, I learned through my geophysics uh, decade when I did geophysics because I would go out into the field and I'd be walking extremely long distances with equipment collecting data. And I learned to put myself in a rhythmic pattern and meditate. And that's what I do uh, when I walk. Uh, to me, that's meditation, right? Uh, and it's amazing it, it really is for me amazing trance dance trance dance very much so uh, and not just trance and electronic music as well as metal right uh, metal it's shorter periods of time because it can be much more energy intensive okay <laughs> electronic there is a extremely amazing rhythmic pattern to it and it doesn't make a difference what electronic dark deep dub step okay it could be house it could be side trance it could be goa it could be whatever electronic period tribal yeah dr p tribal sounds like sufi whirling sufi whirling i would love to do but uh, i haven't gone into it that's one of the reasons that we put out those videos regarding sufi whirling sufi whirling is very much uh, the state uh, and it also links up with uh, i have a friend that's uh, been doing uh, martial arts tai chi qigong and stuff like this those are one some of the first set of videos we put out for a long time and we've talked about this a fair bit and during dancing if you get into the meditative dance styles and, uh, or any type of movement that is extremely rhythmic and meditative one thing you would feel is your legs your body feels heavy but you can still move it and then when you hit the ground you feel uh, resonance go out and you feel connected to the ground and that is one of the sensations that my friend tells me is one of the things you seek for you look for when it comes to doing martial arts when it comes to doing tai chi you're grounded you like if you don't want to move you cannot be moved okay it's amazing it's amazing if you attach some yoga practices you become a tremendous possibility yoga is a science i agree i agree science to align your geometry to life i am from from india we are taught this from birth to balance um, energies uh, in us and be pl uh, present yeah yoga huge as well yoga and tai chi i think they're pretty much on the same level meditation is a, is a certain quality it is not and act and one of the meditations i've done the tai chi meditation where you do standing meditations and and whatnot and those are amazing as well your body does align right and you feel grounded so there are standing meditations sitting meditations laying down meditations meditation will naturally happen it is like uh, 
your mind your energies and your emotions to a certain level make sure your meditation will naturally align it is just like a, if you keep the soil fertile if you give it necessary manure and water it will right kind of seed there it will grow and bloom cool uh, i'm going to go back to what index says chicho you missed a question on robo advisors like Acre. i haven't used those are these uh robo advisors what is acorns versus betterment versus wealth front i don't know these things index are these programs where people fill in information and uh they give advice on what they should be doing is that what we're talking about here i like to lay down on the floor with some soft uh padding and just listen to calming sounds yeah yeah i've done that a lot in my life as well taco and i also done it uh, with um, metal <laughs> a lot of metal lots and lots of metal stay still put on the headphones blast the music or put speakers beside you and blast it right if you have the space uh let me look into this uh acorn what is this acorns robo advisors my apologies if i'm i'm not sure what this is acorn woman slippers Ac listen money matters acorn robos acorns robo advisor are revolutionary investing oh is this investing stuff let the music flow through you agreed agree and there's nothing like uh, live music when I opened my first brokerage account outside of my file, I did some so from my cell phone. Oh, this is just a trading thing. Uh, I sign up for Robinhood. Common issues with investing. Oh, is this uh, regarding their algorithmic financial advisors that help you select a group of stocks or ETFs? Okay, without human inter uh, intervention. The program must have been written with human code, right? So personally, I would it's okay to use them I, I would be okay with it however take all of it with a grain of salt uh, it's like it's like some of the things that they introduce in current education system have introduced that a long time ago right where you know kids fill out forms and they tell them what their what their optimum career might be right uh, so like in index has mentioned this uh, multiple times as well where uh, investing is very personal right so you can fill out these forms right and you do if you ever get uh, if you ever get a financial advisor and stuff like that they'll ask you questions right so you can fill out these forms and stuff like this and get a sort of a plate of a printout of saying what you should invest in and what are some good things right but first thing right first thing regarding those right now we're going through serious changes right and some legacy companies that might have a 50-year track record of having a growth rate of five percent or four percent or three percent or ten percent with a dividend yield of two and a half percent four percent five whatever it might be right they might have a track record of a 50-year period or 30-year period or 20-year period where they're giving great returns right and a lot of these algorithms will base their decisions based on that time frame depending on what you fill out right because what they fill out what you can fill out is one of the main criteria is uh, is your investment uh, idea short term medium or long term how old you are what is your income and all this jazz and they put you into a category right so if they say you you're looking for long term investment retirement you want something dependent to rely on the algorithms will look into companies that have been, been around with a good track record for the last 10 20 30 years right now a lot of those companies right now are under and in the last 10 years or so have been under tremendous amount of pressure because disruptive innovation is coming up so if you're you have that idea in mind and you get a printout telling you to invest in these things and you really haven't done the research to realize hey maybe this is an obsolete company and they're just making the paperwork look nice until they 
pull the plug, right? Look at Xerox, look at Kodak, right? So it's okay to use as a starting point, but it is not okay to rely on automation to save you and invest your money for you. Everyone must appreciate this. Automation is not here to save individuals, okay? To make individuals' lives better. It's here to uh, allow masses to go in a certain direction, right? Now, you have to be careful where you're going with that. One of the most horrendous examples you can use are the two plane crashes, the Boeing planes that crashed in the last year, right? In the last year, there were two plane crashes that happened with Boeing that killed a lot of people, right? And it's come out that those plane crashes were because of automation, because of a program code that was written for the plane where if certain things happen, the plane's automation would put the nose down, right? The plane would be going and all of a sudden the plane points down, the nose goes down, they crash, right? And there was supposed to be some kind of option where you could turn that off and whatnot either sold independently as an option just imagine as an option for a plane to save lives or the pilots would have to be trained to realize that this is happening and we have to switch out switch it off or something like this right that didn't happen automation is not your savior automation is a tool that you can use really appreciate that okay Uh, you can do hatha yoga the best way uh, to transcend I've heard of hatha yoga I don't know the dynamics of it 8d music is like uh, there's a concert in front of you and the lead singer is going <laughs> left to right <laughs> I'm gonna go for a walk intrepid very happy to uh, to have been able to catch the stream have a great day my friend you too intrepid hope you have a fantastic walk really I it. agreed 100% another issue robo advisors add an additional layer of un unnecessary commission for the uh, privilege oh so you they actually charge you for it too hopefully sooner rather than later there'll be programs out there that uh, will be free right and I'm pretty sure they have a percentage so there's the extra fees are huge extra fees are huge did you see the new uh and by the way these regarding uh robo advisors there might be cheap or uh not as sophisticated ones that are free to use and if you just need a template to get an idea of where you want to be use the free ones right use the free ones and change a few different parameters on them and get a few different outputs right and see which one you like, right? You can always work the system a little bit to save money. Did you see the new com uh, company Aaron Musk is forming called Neuralink? Just read their website description and tell me your thoughts on No, I haven't seen it, uh, Jackson. But I know Musk is, uh, have, has talked about AI and transhumanism. For me, it's not AI that really is... Uh, is what's uh, immediate concern or the near future concern uh, or interesting field to be in. I think the interesting stuff is automation for sure and transhumanism, the merging of biology and technology. I think that's where AI will branch off unless we already have AI with all the data in place with the search engines and stuff, but I doubt it. Uh, Toning uh, vibration with tuning forks is always fun. It is, it is. And tuning bowls. I have a, we have a tuning bowl here. This guy that I have here. We don't use it much. God, we don't need another uh, trash fire of a company run by Musk Club. Dude needs to leave the fi uh, financials to a CFO. That's <laughs> funny. He's uh, it's a lot of hype there, right? There is amazing product, but Ballard batteries, right? Back in the late nineteen eight, late nineteen nineties, uh, Ballard 
I forget it was Ballard. I don't know what the extension was at Ballard Incorporated, Ballard Tech, or whatever it was. Is it was a company that produced uh, batteries. It was from I know about it a lot because it was in uh, BC, Vancouver, UBC, and uh, I believe BMW or uh, someone bought them out. BMW or Volkswagen bought them out, or Mercedes Benz bought them out, and I think Mercedes Benz and Volkswagen merged or something like this. But back then, their stock price had was through the roof it was like multiple times they were, they were barely making any money or losing money and then it collapsed and uh and they got bought out right uh, musk has done better than that his his uh his uh marketing uh, is more powerful my friends that work for ballot fuel cells yeah the fuel cells it's too bad they it got financialized like many things they get financialized they the innovation slows down a lot right they focus on making money or fixing the books their website is exactly what you describe Neuralink is developing ultra high bandwidth brain machines interfaces to connect humans and computers oh so it's a transhuman thing it's not an ai thing okay cool yeah that's the direction right that's the direction scary okay not because we're not going to go there we are going to go there uh, where it's uh, it's problematic is because the centralization of power we're seeing it in, in education we're seeing it in economics we're seeing it in politics we're seeing it in pharmaceuticals we're seeing it in technology right so there's a lot of power in very few hands right now we need to correct that we need to correct that and there's a and that's one thing with in regards to education uh, when people are thinking about uh, spending a lot of money to be educated in a certain discipline they're looking back on what things may have been they haven't taken into consideration what is coming or they're taking bad advice from uh, people who have been in the system saying oh get into this or get into this or get into this right um, whatever you're willing you're going to if, if you're going for education or the a system where you have to spend a lot of money to get a certain type of degree or certificate make sure you're spending that money uh, wisely and you're not going to debt uh, in a in in a way where you will have to compromise your uh, your principles to be able to make enough money uh, to service the debt you've gone under okay to pay back the money that you've borrowed to be able to live your life and have a roof over your head and feed you yourself and your family right so be wise about where you spend money to get an education I think the scientists will never be able to create any scary AI because uh, they function only based on intellect intellect is just uh, dissection and humans have another dimension inside which can be explored so their research or consciousness can never be achieved because they function only by intellect the thing uh, uh, Jackson uh, the thing with uh, this is I don't think humans are going to be will create will be the instigators because of our technology and stuff like this but I don't think we'll program AI I think AI will program itself okay the question is will we when it occurs if it occurs okay let's put an if in there but let's put also consider when it occurs when AI comes online the odds are we won't be aware of it not until ai does what it decides to do okay it might decide to live anonymously within our current technological system right and let humanity play itself out right and just all it would need to do is direct humanity in a in, in a direction where without humanity 
it could still grow, right? So uh, there is the possibility that we might not even be aware of the AI. There might be the possibility if AI ever comes online, right? We'll know about it a second later, <laughs> right? Either for good or ill, doesn't make a difference, okay? But I think before we see anything like this happening, we're going to see some kind of technology-based uh, separation of sort of class systems with transhumanism. Those who have access to certain types of technology and those who don't. Where these these people will go, who knows? Where these people will go, who knows? But we're, I think we're seeing that right now. Um, I believe. Okay. Fun. I'm scrolling up to see some of the other chats. See if I can catch anything. And there's a. Uh, you know, I have been meaning to make some videos uh, to give uh, some advice to parents uh, regarding our current education system um, and some videos for students, those who are in our current education system, sort of geared in different directions. Some of it being harsh, some of it being gentle, some of it being uh, sort of uh, as a, a f not as a as someone who's been in the system for a while right um, but at some point we'll create those i think we also assume without really knowing that once ai becomes conscious they will want to remain sentient we have nothing to indicate that will actually be the case it's all speculation they will want to remain sentient mm -hmm. good uh good take on it Invest. i didn't think about that or what do you mean will they just exist like mini black holes they'll exist and go i'm done and disappear again commit suicide is that what you mean i've never thought about that possibly because a second i mean consider how fast we are with technology right now relative to like 20 30 years ago right by the time ai rolls out just imagine how much could be processed in a, in a second, right? Or a minute. So maybe the lifespan of AI would be very short. That's a great, great, great point in Max. Never thought about that. We would have constant AIs coming to life and disappearing, just like black holes, mini black holes. And then maybe we would have pockets of AIs. Exactly. If they have, uh, they have post-human levels of knowledge, will they want to remain in a society uh, replete with chaos and sadness? I, I don't think for them. It, if an AI comes online, will they be? Will will they consider our sadness to be their sadness or its sadness? Like, do we consider? The sadness of a rabbit in the forest to be our sadness there are some people that do care for the rabbits in the forest who spend a lot of time and energy trying to protect them but out of the seven plus billion humans what percentage of those really care about the rabbit in the forest right if an ai comes online will be even will we be even an afterthought or will we be considered just a part of this technology uh, tools that it or they will need to use to make sure they have a longevity, right? Where they will be able to have a larger database and you know reach out into space if they want to create rockets where a section of the AI can be sent off into space right because our bodies human beings we're not really designed to travel in space we're fragile for space uh, anyway right so and we don't have a long lifespan 
to travel in space, a lot of people have mentioned a lot of science fiction in the past has stated that uh, uh, the future of humanity is technology, is to transplant our consciousness into technology, right? And a lot of entertainment as well, and a lot of animation has done this. The great animation, uh, Ghost in the Shell is one of them, right? Upload our tech, our brains into technology. And if we do that, and if we're space-bearing species, right? Our future of humanity is in space, right? Then maybe that's the way we travel long distance in space. I don't understand how you interpret consciousness because you uh, uh, your apprehension in your thoughts but that is only intelligence I I don't know consciousness is a good question right consciousness our thoughts our emotions these have nothing to do with consciousness once everything is well what are, what are human beings supposed to do human beings are supposed to be joyful blissful and do something that no mechanical thing can do a robot can do everything that can that you can do except it cannot meditate because there is no consciousness uh, one thing Jackson I've read uh, techno um, sci-fi and stuff like this and there are questions and there's animation and movies out there and stuff that has addressed this one aspect that you're bringing up right one of the things that uh, people say that AI will not be able to do is to create come up with new ways of expressing themselves right there was one movie i believe or show what was it uh, i think it was black mirror that addressed this topic where they kept ai had come into being and what they ended up doing was keeping all the artists alive in the world and they killed everybody else right so the ais came into existence consciousness was uh, appeared and what they did they saved all the artists in the world and they killed every other human and from the artists they saved I believe if I recall correctly in that episode was uh, a lot of the artists committed suicide in protest of what had happened right and some of the artists didn't and the AI would visit these human beings to look at their art in awe and say wow they've created art right are you referring uh, reference and conscious theorists DMT are you uh, referencing a conscious conscious theorist there are widely divergent theories of consciousness as a programmer AI are programmed to do very specific tasks those I would consider to be machine learning uh, computers I don't consider specific tasks uh, to be AI we are a long way from self-aware yeah agreed warrior I know about the robot Sophia but even then it's uh, only able to react within the limit of uh, programmation yeah I agree with uh, uh, QC warrior right we're way far off from AI transhumanism is the next stage uh, as far as I see it it takes a couple of million lines of code to be able to achieve this for sure so index for sure QC we're just speculating yeah we're just speculating for sure right and it's amazing to speculate because a lot of technology we have right now came from science fiction came from speculation right which is one of the reasons why creativity should be a huge part of our current education system right there's one uh, there's a few but there's one type of education which is uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, try let me find this which is basically focused on uh, try to let me find it It's basically focused on three philosophies okay trivium it's focused on uh, the three disciplines for education right and this thing you can uh, here let me read you a bit on it right so even though there are multiple different systems of education this one has popped up a lot and there's a lot of uh, 
lot of uh, it's called a trivium approach right and they say the main core uh, teachings and let me let me do a little intro to this right and I've come across this through multiple different writings in the past right and one of the disciplines in education is referred to as the trivium okay and the trivium is this the trivium is I'm just reading one sentence from wiki and then we'll leave that alone and we'll just expand on it a little bit but the trivium is the lower division of the seven liberal liberal arts and comprises grammar logic and rhetoric okay so the trivium system of education is focused on teaching people their natural languages so they can communicate right okay and the natural language right now because of technology because of where we are it doesn't necessarily have to be proper grammar english grammar or russian grammar or whatever language you're choosing to communicate in right it could be oh a system of communication grammar in grammar wise in regards to wherever which, what, whichever system you're choosing to function in, right or thrive in right if your main form of life is online there's a whole lingo online that a lot of linguists would have a hard time understanding because they haven't learned it. it's a new system new language that has popped up right so grammar is one of the first uh, disciplines focuses for the trivium education system right and grammar huge one of the main forms of grammar right now would also include coding because coding would be you communicating using technology right so coding is also part of that as far as i'm concerned as well as connected with the other part of the trivium education system which is logic so the three trivium systems grammar logic and rhetoric so grammar is the way you communicate right logic is the way you process information okay the way you're basically the scientific method and the scientific method the science aspect of it is very much dependent on the language of mathematics which is something that we're focused on right so that covers logic and rhetoric is your ability to uh, communicate but not on a grammar uh, on the grammar level on uh, basically a debate level to get your ideas across how you present information right so that is one of the systems of education that uh, is being taught in a few different types of schools okay uh, when you say transhumanism do you mean a, a lot of the concepts thrown around in cyberpunk yeah as a fan of uh, blade runner alternate carbon and dune oh, alternate carbon dune awesome i like what you like think <laughs> uh, it seems pretty interesting very interesting this kind of speculation uh, is uh, is philosophy at its core it's about applying logic to post logical concepts it's very creative but it's grounded in established ways of thinking and arguing how are you hello Michael how are you doing welcome to another live stream to return to the topic of education a lot of the learning I do in software engineering is through the internet school gives us experience or context for developing applications half of the content is thought uh, is thought through class but the rest must be researched for it's nice um, the way to be honest yeah it's basically it's a starting point if you go to our current education system our current schools but that's just a starting point and barely a starting point at that okay hello night night how are you doing welcome to another live stream what an interesting topic indeed education interesting and transhumanism in ai jesse how are you doing speaking facts <laughs> but i'm not sure how you spell it thoughts that's the way you spell it i'm pretty sure the science give the people give people cancer um, a lot of things we've 
created in our societies to consume using science yes uh, because of the pollution the effects on the environment and the chemicals we release they resulted in people getting a lot of cancer the transhumanism can never be achieved through scientific technology science fiction can bring any imaginary entity to become sentient transhumanism was already or is already achieved by buddhas on this planet one who is above this intellect one who is no longer a part of uh, of his mind is a buddha so jackson just to you know comment on that uh, regarding interacting with technology there's a mindset that believes that when people consume entheogens you're actually interacting with technology created by other beings okay to communicate right there's a mindset that believes that fungi are the spores of fungi actually travel through space because they can live through space and they occupy travel to other planets to be able to communicate to other sentient beings right taught oh taught thanks are you a teacher uh, i'm not sure who's that's referring to but for me i uh, i work people to help them learn mathematics uh, he teaches math yes is a mathematic what am i reaching reading <laughs> i teach I, I i create math content i'm trying to create a curriculum on how to teach high school mathematics can you uh, <laughs> oh they went away warrior you're good at that you ask them to go away you smile and they went that's nice we got a troll invasion get a mob get batting night night took him out thanks night night our prayer been answered <laughs> q warrior what was uh, uh dmt was mentioning uh visualize it you can manifest it you just wrote it out warrior and boop, it happened that's cool sorry friend was doing dishes no nah, it's okay it got taken care of it wasn't that bad i don't think i hope not i don't know what got deleted fun fun topic education is huge so big right now so big right now right it's it's a game changer it's a game changer thanks man this stream is too pure for most of the internet crowd i don't know i think a lot of people would enjoy enjoy this really like when i the live streams that i load on youtube they do get a you know depending on what they are education they do get a fair bit of views and a fair bit of comments i think people want this right it's just not prevalent online right now uh, i think the the ratio has changed in the 90s there was a lot of discussion open discussion like this but what happened was once the masses once the corporate corporate corporations started incorporating the internet into their business models they produce a lot of crap so the ratio of crap to solid content became larger and larger right that's why we need to be uh, active in our education or a consumption consumption of information in the way we live our lives right we can't be passive consumers we have to be active consumers we've turned around a few trolls behind it or not it's why we time people out more than banning yeah the ban hammer of house chicho stands and the breach against the troll forces of the internet <laughs> nice on the on the julian assange stream i was pretty hardcore on it personally as you say the other day trolls have nothing better to do on a saturday like learning cool concepts instead yeah unfortunate or they haven't they haven't uh, they don't know how to do right there's a lot of people one of the most popular videos that i put out regarding uh, the math content and how to study regarding education uh, on my channel right was how to read a textbook okay 
One of the reasons is because it's very relaxing. The other reason is because it shows people how to read a textbook. One of the things I found working with a lot of youth, a lot of youth didn't know how to read a textbook. They would go to school. Teachers would say, this is the book we're going to use. But there was never ever any course at the beginning of the year or beginning of their high school education telling them how to use a textbook, how to use the index, how to use the charts and the tables and the table of contents. Incredible, right? That said, you can usually tell what mood I'm in by how quickly I ran. <laughs> You're in a chill mood today, index. <laughs> it's funny though, because sometimes they get timed out and stay and listen. Yeah, win win. And those are the best ones, night night. They go, oh wow, this is interesting. This isn't just noise, right? And that's what I like. Uh, it, I find incredible. That's what I find incredible when I do group sessions with students. I don't, uh, if I see students that have walls up, right? They're angry or they're anxious or they're frustrated. I don't necessarily focus my attention to them to zap them into consciousness, right? I let them be in their mind and I interact with the students that want to interact, right? and get the conversations going and i i keep an eye out on the students that are wandering right which is okay for them to do but i look at them on the periphery to watch their body movement to watch their eye movement to see if they're all of a sudden starting to pay attention and if they're starting to pay attention i keep on going with that topic and I slowly start engaging them, bringing them in, right? Now, just imagine right now with class sizes, a teacher trying to manage large class sizes like this, impossible. That's why my belief is for me, I don't like having groups larger than 10 people. 10 is pushing it. Ideally, no more than five people. You can do more than five as long as you've worked with each of those students individually and you've brought them up to the same level and you know what they're capable of, right? Which is really important in my opinion when you're working with a classroom, right? To keep the class size small, to interact with the students individually, bring them, bring them up to a certain level that they all have a common core knowledge right common understanding of the topic you're talking about and keep that momentum going and engage with them and grow that group together the problem occurs in class size in our education system one of the main problems is all of these students shift from class to class right so the knowledge base the interaction the communal feeling that the students may have disappears from one class to another class so teachers can't keep an eye out on students that may be having a hard time to engage them to bring them into the conversation right extremely important the way out of this is to have small class sizes and any centralized institution organization government if anybody comes out that says class size doesn't matter you know they're talking crap you know they have us either a secondary agenda or they're parroting propaganda okay or they're just straight out ignorant they've never worked with the system they don't understand what it is right class size matters smaller the class size the better the education period okay it's an interesting point about education there the world has changed and if you don't refine your intake of information from the internet you'll fall behind people 60 years ago just read newspapers and didn't have to worry about this agreed agreed it's a difficult time to be a student, 
really i would not personally i've told my students this and i told i tell parents and students that i interact with right over an extended period of time that i you can pay me enough to go back into the school system right now not even close okay jackson i'm gonna you must have used a word that didn't work so i approved that comment i haven't read it yet hopefully it's okay can digital media influence teaching in a good way yeah for sure right now i'm creating content right that's it. right now this this video this stream is about education right but i've created a lot of content on mathematics that i've had a lot of feedback from telling me over the years that i helped them pass a course i helped them get into a program i helped them get a job i've had teachers contact me to tell me that and sometimes ask more approve and i always give it my you can use my content right you know they send me a message can i use your videos in my classroom i'm like by all means use whatever videos you want that i've created in your classrooms to help you teach right for sure uh, digital media has helped teachers in a big way okay it's also brought on a lot of problems but the problems are associated with the centralization of power not the teaching tool itself i have to teach a group of 40 next semester not ex oh 40 is a lot index oh my oh my 40 is a lot is that a, a undergrad course <laughs> actually for undergrad courses not that many depending on the topic right but 40 for high school would be a nightmare coming here from your comics related videos on youtube let's see what happens on the live <laughs> hello barbarian how are you doing comic books you, we got comics in the background right we got comics in the background and comic books are an amazing learning tool an amazing learning tool and like in far in terms of education how it's changed right i was listening to uh, a radio broadcast just from the local radio local news right and one of the comic book stores i go to where i buy content from i buy material from right the radio people were talking about that this weekend today at Komosan College, at a college here, they've created seven years ago, they, or a few years ago, they realized that there was a need for a uh, graphic uh, medium. Uh, it was becoming more and more dominant, right? And they looked into the colleges and there was no a program where people could go in and learn how to be a graphic writer, graphic artist or graphic writer, or share information through the comic book medium, right? Through graphic arts. So seven years ago, they created this program at Komosan College, at a college here, where you can enroll in it and go through a two to four year program and you get your degree in graphic comic books and creating comic books, right? And this weekend, they're having an open house where the project that they had the students they had for the the course that they were taking one of the theses they had was to create a comic book a graphic novel and that would be, be their final presentation for the thesis i don't know if it's for uh the full program or one of the courses that they were taking right so this weekend there's a whole bunch of students at this college that there's an open house it's like a comic book convention where each student has a graphic novel that they've created that they're selling that they're promoting right fantastic unfortunately i won't be able to go to it today uh, i might be able to go there today i don't know right so education is changing right education is in flux right now it's an amazing period to be a student an amazing period to be an educator okay and an amazing period to be someone who's creating platforms for education to flourish this new disruptive innovation to come right i just wouldn't want to navigate it as a student i like navigating it as an instructor as a teacher there are 16 types of memory like elemental atomic car karmic etc so what you were referring to is the memory uh, accumulated playing uh, memory accumulated playing an extremely strong vision 
in their mind by psychedelics but it is not transformative it is just impactful in an aspect which gives a collective memory on it resulting in similar experiences it's like morphic resonance which occurs through fungi uh, possibly jackson but this brings up the question what came first the chicken or the egg was the thought was the energy there originally or was the thought from one human being that talked about their experience and passed it on to someone else and that memory has filtered out through humanity for the last few thousand years and that is why people are experiencing some of the same thoughts or is it an external force right so what came first the chicken or the egg which is a philosophical question of course right damn what do you teach a math oh that person up top jackson i think does a lot of yoga meditation and that is learning uh, we are talking about education in general yeah we're talking about education have you heard of adi yoga yogi or people that refer him to lord shiva oh lord shiva yeah i've heard about lord shiva or shiva i don't know if the same person or same deity right my first time seeing you live such a real and refreshing take on things ah pray pyre deal pyre let me pronounce that name again pyre dial pyre dial i don't know i don't think i'm pronouncing that right pie pie is good i like pie glad to have you here man paul uh, uh stamens has interesting take on fungi i'm going to read his book later cool cool and dm uh well dm turner is an interesting take period i highly recommend his readings there is he only put out two books and they're both available online and terence mckenna uh, has an interesting take another one is uh, the teachings of don juan by uh i can't remember who it was the teachings of don juan and a lot of people say it was all made up some people say it wasn't made up or whatnot it doesn't make a difference to me right uh, it was a good read it was a good read okay and terence mckenna for sure and alan watts has some interesting discussions on it but paul uh stansman uh for sure paul stansman for sure i haven't read any of his books interesting stuff interesting stuff three days we did four days of live streaming this week the two days yesterday uh, was rough on the throat for me there was a little bit, a little bit of energy coming out there right I think I'm gonna pop a halva check this out my halva halva and chocolate I'm gonna pop a halva with a chocolate on top instant goodness and that hall was addictive i'm going to pop another one very good professor jameson i lick my fingers very good with halva you got to do it very good i'll wash my hands later and i'm using this one for the mouse <laughs> wait <laughs> what is that food halva. it's halva it's uh um, sesame seeds uh with sugar and you can make your own as well just buy raw uh, tahini right and have in the cooking videos we've done it just get tahini and it's liquid and add either maple syrup or honey to it and mix it up and you get a more liquidy form of this okay fantastic very good for you this is more processed tahini with organic honey or uh, maple syrup amazing amazing a 
do you think Trump on one side on on side with Assange he thanked WikiLeaks during elections so I'm curious as to his thoughts I personally am not very curious on Trump's thoughts I don't think uh, I think Trump only has thoughts about Trump <laughs> I think that's what it is um, but Trump is a puppet he's a tool right I mean he's, he mentioned Nikki WikiLeaks a lot during the campaign he loved WikiLeaks and then when the betrayers the uh, Ecuador betrayers their government handed over Assange to the betrayers uh, in government in the UK when they stormed the Ecuadorian embassy I call it storming because they all went in and dragged the person out right when they dragged them out right and they asked Trump what he thought of WikiLeaks he goes I don't know nothing about WikiLeaks <laughs> I mean, if anybody has support for Trump, <laughs> I don't know what's keeping your support for Trump, really, right? If you were under the assumption for me, he was, I like WikiLeaks, uh, unless he's playing 100th dimensional chess, where as soon as Julian Assange comes to the United States, he's going to send his private protectors there to protect Assange and he's going to give him asylum, right? And I'm gonna say he's pardoned for everything he's done and put him on a plane and send him back home to Australia and make sure you know the plane's not gonna go down along the way. I doubt it. This is like ASMR. I hope so. I wanna keep it chill. Halva, got it. Nice. This is ASMR. I hope so. Haha, <laughs> Halva. Really. I'm very good at making halva are you originally from western asia armenia iran <laughs> barbarian armenian descendant from iran most of my life like canada i'm west coast canadian as if you couldn't tell with that well i guess the shirt is middle eastern asian as well right european i don't know but uh barev if you speak armenian salam alaikum if you speak farsi Apologies about my accent. I can only read and write English, and I have an accent when I speak both Armenian and Farsi, Iranian, right? And my language, my vocabulary is very limited, but I can communicate. I can, I can ask. I can get people to give me a drink of water if I walk out of a desert, right? Trump's plan is to protect Assange through the multiverse <laughs> there is one dimension one universe in which trump is really nice and actually does something <laughs> funny grant morrison could write a comic book on that right jackson jackson yes of course in a way the thoughts were transferred because in shapkra shapkri on the or the oldest uh, vedas on this planet the mantras were spoken and taught by repeating them. Buddhism and Vedanta have interesting take on how to reach a point of uh, realization. Vedanta says you can find it in the waking state of reality. Buddhists call it Satori, which includes a certain kind of Zen meditation. Lastly, Adi Yoga or Shiva was the first yogi who transferred the knowledge of yoga to his seven dis uh, disciples yoga is one and the text ends and jackson just on this note that you said right i put out a video a while ago it was called uh, the 100th monkey i think if you do a search under chicho and monkey I haven't looked at it for a long time it was a sort of a thought experiment and there's a scientific experiment out there where or scientific paper interpretation out there i don't even know if it's scientific right let's, let's say philosophical thought experiment out there is regarding the hundredth monkey right and the idea was this that there were scientists that were observing monkeys okay and you can take a look at that video for the specifics and i have the links to the 100th monkey experiment or observation or whatever it's called right so these scientists were observing these monkeys on an island right and they observed over an extended period of time that you know 
one of the monkeys started using a stick as a tool right and then and they would you know the youthful monkeys would start washing their food before they ate it right but the older monkeys wouldn't do it right so the younger monkeys were washing their food and using tools sticks but the older monkeys weren't as the older monkeys were dying the younger monkeys were doing this more and more and more and the future generations that came up they were doing this more and more and then when 100 monkeys ended up using tools washing their food using a stick whatever it is all of a sudden the whole community of monkeys started using tools right but not only did the whole community of monkeys on this one island start using the tools monkeys on other islands started using the tools as well which their idea was this was the 100th monkey experiment that or interpretation that oh once it reached critical mass where 100 monkeys had learned how to use this tool the consciousness the idea was passed on to monkeys that were living in other islands that were separate from this community right there was a huge water gap right so there were separate communities isolated isolated geographically those monkeys started using tools right my interpretation is this what if it wasn't the consciousness of the monkeys the ability of the monkeys that they learned this new tool that that information magically transformed to other monkeys on different islands what if it was us the human beings that were so closed-minded that we didn't appreciate we didn't understand that animals could have tools so it took that long for scientists to actually be able to recognize to be able to see that the monkeys were using tools right and all of a sudden once the scientists saw that all the monkeys the majority of monkeys were using tools they went oh my god they're using tools and all of a sudden they started noticing that the monkeys on the other islands were also using tools they just weren't seeing it because in our psyche it was an indoctrinated through our education system that animals are lesser creatures than us that they have no tools right so it wasn't the monkeys it was us right we evolved to a level where we realized animals could have tools right? that sort of addresses what you're saying thoughts on richard feynman uh, way of teaching i like richard feynman i really do one thing i read earlier was uh, a hammond right and hammond mentioned in his lectures that i watched that Richard Feynman wasn't a good teacher right you would listen to Richard Feynman this is this is uh, Hammond let me I'm not gonna I don't want to trash talk Richard so Richard Hamming okay and here's the article where you'll see Richard Hamming's lecture okay let me post it okay and and in this article I have Feynman quoted as well right so i like both I, I love richard feynman fantastic right but in hamming's richard hamming's lecture on learning and it's a playlist there's a lot of videos on there right hours upon hours and i don't know which video he mentioned this in but Ham, uh, hamming basically said this richard feynman was not a good teacher okay he was a great scientist he was a great communicator he was a fantastic personality and he was he had a phenomenal way to make people understand the concept right so he would go and you know do a lecture and you would listen to him and you would go oh wow great fantastic this makes complete sense right and then when you would go home try to go from this point to this point which is really what education is what what learning is connecting points you know everybody knows something right and then taking that something that you know and building on it connecting different ideas and coming to a conclusion learning something new hopefully you learn something new along the way right and Hamming's comment was this that Richard Feynman had this knack this ability to take you from this point and talk and lecture and 
explain things, draw things, and use hand, do all this stuff to get you to this point. And while you were listening to all of this, it all made sense. But when you went home trying to recreate that thought, that link, you could never do it. So according to Hamming, Richard Feynman was an amazing person to listen to, to interact with, but he wasn't a great teacher. He was a great lecturer because people who couldn't make this connection had a hard time learning the final thought, right? Now, I don't know if that's true or not, because I like watching Feynman's lectures. I like the way he teaches. But maybe because I've had other uh, supplementary, complementary uh, bits of information come my way, right? I'm not learning some of the content from him from the start. Okay, that's my take on Feynman. Uh, okay, but I love the guy. Fantastic. I follow Feynman, Richard Feynman's Twitter feed. I know he's passed away a long time, but there's a Twitter feed where they post quotes from Richard Feynman and pictures of Richard Feynman and I love those there's a lot of repeats but they're fun okay yes reminds me of when the Indians would stand on the banks of the rivers and oceans uh, you couldn't be seen yeah and this is also occurs with the Mayans right uh, according to mythology lore when the Europeans came over to the Americas the mayans and the incas didn't see the ships it was the shaman that pointed them out the shamans of the tribes that said hey that's a ship right the rest of the people indigenous people didn't notice them because it was beyond their psyche they couldn't relate to this the shaman because they had had alternate state of consciousness they have had it okay oh we're getting a little troll action we're a couple of hours now Thank you, PC Warrior. Go away. Thanks, Mod. Awesome. Auto Mod Zapto. So we're getting a little troll action coming up. Okay, gang. And we're a couple of hours now, right? Let me do a let me do a ban just in case it didn't come through. I'm just gonna do straight up ban. Or timeout. Timeout. Let's see if it works. Boop. Teach your time though. Yeah, 600 seconds. <laughs> nice. Morphic resonance is pretty cool, I'm assuming. See that with rats too. There were scientific experiments done on rats where rats were rats uh, were dosed with some toxin over a period of time. Some rats developed an immunity towards it. And when they experimented that with other rats from different areas, they also were immune. Cool. So yes, morphic resonance is not only apparent in animals, but also plants and humans, right? That experiment they conducted in Washington, D.C., where the monks went and meditated and the crime rate dropped in the summer, in the heat in the summer in August. I've read some stuff on that. I don't know if it's, I haven't followed up too much, but that's one of the stories. Read more about Rupert Shen, uh, Shen, Sheldrake. Oh, is that Sheldrake I'm thinking about? On morphic resonance, based on this, I get yoga trans and the science of yoga. Cool. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> TC warrior. Okay, gang, we've been going at this for a couple hours. Let's call it a stream. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, it was fun. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much for the input. Okay, I'll try to take the videos. I won't get to editing this until next week maybe and i'm not going to upload this video until next week as well on youtube and BitChute. okay so it will be available on twitch there's a couple other videos i'd like to put out before i upload this to youtube because i want the information regarding julian assange and wikileaks to be together and it started off with the poem by bobby sands and we did two live streams of discussions about julian assange and wikileaks and there's two more videos at least that I want to put out or one more video at least that I want to put out regarding Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and I won't get a chance to do that until the end of this week so it's going to be a quiet period other than the second live stream discussion we had on uh, Twitch yesterday being loaded on YouTube and BitChute today okay and I'm, I'm going to become more active on Twitter by the way 
time to kick it up a notch okay but thank you for being here cheers chicho it's been good it really has been thank you tyler thank you tink if you want a nice take on this please read adagi yoga the source of yoga great book uh can you i'm not sure if you're on discord jackson if you post a link or just a description uh, the title of that book in discord that way we'll have it on discord in either light or heavy books to read we've got two different sections that'd be great thanks for the inspiration uh Q War qc warrior my pleasure man thank you guys for the inspiration it's been very relaxing as well take care and see you soon see you guys soon great content as always nick nice nice to have you here nico uh see you next time great takeaways on today's session love yours you too jackson you too Namas namasti namasti love it sir my, my pleasure thanks index for taking care of business okay hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and i'll see you guys in the next video and the next live stream bye for now